Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make light caustics. And uh, basically, caustics are going to be like the way that the light is refracted through a translucent surface. So in our case, it's going to be water. Uh, but you can kind of see some a lot of these uh, images you see here are computer generated, but um, some of these are genuine. And uh, But it gives you a good idea of what you're actually looking for. So basically, you want to uh, do a, a simulation of caustics on the ground and on surfaces that are underneath the water. So first I'm going to show you how to do it for a map that is completely underwater. And the first thing you need um, for, for this is a texture. So let's go new. Uh, this is just in GIMP I'm doing this. You can go to filters, render, clouds, and then difference clouds. And uh, you can see I've recorded this a few times already. I've got the settings all, all set up here. But uh, I know that there's a very similar thing you can do in Photoshop so it'll work just as well there but basically what you want is uh, you want randomized setup you want turbulent setup because it's going to be what's going to give you kind of these sharper differences here and tileable right and then basically what you're going to want to do is keep control Z control F uh, until you get one that looks really good and like something that you really want to be able to use so the one that I ended up using uh, for mine looks like this right so it looks like my ta my uh, size is a little bit bigger anyways so the first thing I'm going to show you like I say is uh, how to set it up so that your whole map can be underwater now here is my actual caustics texture that I made excuse me caustics material uh, basically here's here's the important part uh, you want a distortion texture which is actually uh, done using the same filter except without turbulent turned on and with uh, I actually had detail turned up a bit anyways you get the idea uh, and so then you go and you basically pan these across each other and, and do some weird stuff effectively so that you end up with um, just some various distortion here and then in my case I did it on a small scale like this and then I also did it with one that was uh, scaled up quite a bit here so that um, I have like fine detail, but then I also have like a bigger version of this distortion. And then, basically, it's not really important how you have it set up, just as long as there's some distortion, right? And then what you want to do is plug that into a mask that uh, just lets red and green through, so R and G, because those are the X and Y coordinates, and these are going to be what's going to uh, distort your texture. Then you want to multiply that by a constant so usually it's going to be a low constant but I'll explain what this does in a second and then you add that to a texture coordinate of whatever size you want and if you don't uh, want it to be like scaled at all or tiled uh, just leave it at one and one but you need the texture coordinate and then basically what this multiplying is going to do is going to affect how strong how strongly it the uh, distortion is added to your texture coordinate all right and then you plug that into the UVs of your texture sample, and then you have a power here with uh, an exponent, and this exponent is going to affect how strong the uh, the effect is here. So, like at 0.75, it's going to kind of uh, basically, in my case, it's going to make it kind of more like blurry, and it's not going to be quite as fine. I can bump this up to like two or something, and you're going to get a stronger effect. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see in this, and I'll, I'll show you in a different version that I have made also, uh, that changing some of these values from back here and changing like scale options and things like that uh, can have a big effect on it. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Anyways, uh, excuse me. You want to clamp it down then, and then again multiply it by some value that you can change easily, and then plug it into the alpha of a lerp, and then in the A and B, uh, remember, A is going to be where the value is black or zero. Um, plug in whatever color you want for that, and then for the B, it's going to be where it's bright and white, and plug in whatever value you want for that. So in my case, I basically said where it's black, I want it to be this bluish color, so the, the light that's shining through the water is going to be blue to begin with. And then I want this to be the color that, um, that the actual light is, if you know what I mean. Because this way, I can say that the uh, the light that comes through is a little bit extra yellow. Because in real life, 
uh, light shining through water, the, the water kind of absorbs some of, the, some of the red and green. And that's why you get kind of a bluish look underneath the water. So let's see what all this looks like when you actually get it in. Now, first I'll say I'm going to do this as a light function. Uh, the UDK kind of has a little bit of a glitch right now, though, where you can't add a light function to a light that's already been uh, in, in the level for a while and, there, and things like that. Like, it seems like if the light's been baked already, then it doesn't work. So the first thing I'm going to do here is delete the light. And then I'm going to add a new light that's the same light, so just a dominant, uh, dominant directional light. And I'll add it right up here. Okay, so here's my dominant directional light. Uh, the reason it looks kind of uh, washed out is because they had a few settings set up on theirs, like they had their brightness to 4. I think their light might have been a little bit colored. Y you can do this however you want, but either way. Uh, and then you want to go to... Yeah, so you want to go to uh, light function here and click the little green or the blue arrow and click light function and then go add your light function material. Okay, so here's what my material looks like for underneath the ocean. And uh, you can change the scale here, so like... Or... You know, and things like that. Um, anyways, and then I'll show you the texture that I have for my pool. And because the pool... Okay. The further the, the light has to travel through the surface, the more spread out and, like, uh, like I want to say uh, imprecise the lighting will be. Where then uh, a shallower body of water, like a pool, will be quite a bit finer. So you'll see here, um, it was intentionally designed so that the, the, the lighting looks quite a bit finer. Now, I'll say real quick, I, I understand that my art isn't maybe the best in the world, uh, you can actually go and find um, the caustics that they have in the UDK already. Uh, it might take me a minute to find it. Here's a version of it, at least. And you can go and grab their whole system of caustics and, and uh, plug it into yours and it'll look great, whatever. Uh, and that's fine. You know, <laughs> they have... They have a, a bit of extra stuff set up on it, like they have theirs set up by depth and things like that. Um, and you don't... I mean, you can just delete that stuff and plug in uh, plug in the important stuff, if you know what I mean. So... Anyways... Uh, that's how I do my caustics for, like, a whole map that's underwater. And I'll show you real quick why that doesn't work if your map isn't all underwater. Okay, so here's my pool map. And uh, you can see I've got caustics underneath here. Okay, now, they're not set up for my light, though. So I'll del delete my light for a minute. I'll uh, go and add a new one so that I can show you... If I have a light set up, and I have um, a light function set up inside of it, look at that. Now I've got these nice uh, caustics for my whole map, right? But I don't exactly want that in a, <laughs> you know, in a level like this where not everything is, you know, not under the water. See, because you can see it affects underneath here but it also affects out here, and that's not definitely not a good thing. So I'm going to get rid of this. And that's overly bright now, so I'll lower it back down. Yeah, so the nice thing about a light function is that it only shines where it's supposed to shine. It doesn't shine in the shadow. It shines in all the objects that it's supposed to, etc. So I had to find a way that it would work to have just my caustics here on my uh, where I want it to in the sunlight but not up here. So what I ended up doing actually was uh, setting up a custom lighting solution. And uh, so like, here's what it ended up looking like. And you can, uh, you can go find my tutorial on um, custom lighting 
and basically all that I do is I take that normal setup and uh, I add my caustics, this stuff down here, I add it right into my custom lighting. So I've got a lerp set up so that I've got, I've got the caustic color just how I want. Then I uh, have this, my normal material set up how I want it to. And then basically it's going to combine these two and then add this into it. So generally speaking though, you don't want to have um, custom lighting when you don't need to because it's, it's not going to run quite as well. Uh, another problem with setting it up like this is, um, like, it doesn't it doesn't work on my iron guard here. Do you see what I mean? Um, because objects under the water uh, won't count. I mean, like, because it's, it's material-specific, right? Um, you could potentially add custom lighting to the iron guard as well, but then you'd also have to set it up so that, you know, he would only be affected when he went underneath water and things like that. Which would be very doable, but it's it's hardly worth all the effort. Anyway, so this is my custom lighting setup then. And uh, again, my classics aren't maybe the best in the world, but hopefully this helped you out.